friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks workshop with uh, some drone footage for you today. No work in this video, just so you know. And before we get to that footage, I just thought I'd show you something that I did here to work with my remote. This is the remote for the drone and it folds up like so. And the intention is you pull these out and you slide your smartphone in here and then while you're flying it, then you can move these controls and you can see your smart see your smartphone right in this area here like this and of course that smartphone is good but it's such a tiny little picture compared to a tablet and so I had a tablet holder for a microphone stand and I adapted it to this board here and this board is about the same size of course as my smartphone so I can slide my board into this smartphone holder there. Now I can put my tablet on here and I can be looking at my tablet as I'm operating this and that's much, much better for control. So I just thought I'd show you that little tip there in case somebody else has a drone and they'd like to uh, do that same thing. Wasn't very difficult to do. Just tell you that this is my very first footage shot with the drone and it just happened to be a snowy day and snowing so it's kind of pretty um, some of it's very good footage in terms of it's nice steady flying and then there's a lot of it where the cam where i didn't know what i was doing and i would move the camera really fast or move the drone really fast and things like that so i cut most of that really jerky fast footage out and because i cut that out then it'll jerk a little bit from one scene to the other so i apologize for the jerkiness in the film but uh, hope you enjoy it i'll try to narrate the uh, video for you so that you'll know what you're looking at as you can see we're at liftoff we're headed down the valley this first field is a hay field and I will add that it's not real good hay. It's mostly fescue hay for those of you who know about such things. We're headed down to the first pasture. Those are the some of the horses out in the pasture. There's our field shed there for the horses to take shelter in. As we go down the valley, keep in mind it's one mile to the very end of the property from our one fence to the other, I should say. It's one mile. So in this view, you really can't see to the very end of the property, though that lightly grayed out small hill at the far background is pretty close. This line of trees is the second pasture. That's the way we refer to it. And I think about this time here on my very first flight, I got chicken, couldn't see the drone or hear it anymore. So I hit the home button and it immediately turns around and heads back. And it does that pretty much on its own. You don't really have to do anything. You can see the smoke coming up in the valley to the right. That's where our main, that's where the main house is. And uh, that smoke is coming from my outdoor wood furnace. And it really does take a lot of wood to keep that fire going on that house. I think we'll see the house from a better shot later on. That line of trees going across the valley is about how far we flew on this first trip. And we're setting her down and landing it 
after the first flight. Now, this is about an hour later. You can see it's snowing pretty good. And the kids are out in the field with the four-wheelers and sleds, and those are the grandkids. And so the idea was for me to go down and try to get some footage of them. And uh, that's easier said than done on only my second flight here. But I tried and got a little bit of decent footage, but not, not the best. Most of the grandkids were here just for the uh, first big snowfall. They seem to be having a good time. I'm trying to learn how to operate the camera and the drone and keep it on the subject, but Sometimes it's opposite of what you're expecting. But once you get it, it's a pretty stable picture if you can keep it stable. And that's my problem is keeping it stable. I think I got brave about now and decided to go further down the valley again. And I was also kind of test flying it in the snow just to make sure everything was going to work fine in the snow. It seemed to handle the snow with no problem whatsoever. I didn't get a whole lot further down the valley, I don't think, on this trip either. And I kept drifting to the right. And when I was just looking at that small screen, the smartphone screen, that is, it was uh, difficult to tell where I was. And I can see here in the footage that I'm getting fairly close to the trees on the right there. And I think I got chicken about this time and turned around and came back again. This time I came back on my own. I didn't rely on the home button. So I actually flew it back this time. Even though I really couldn't see it other than I was just watching the screen on the smartphone. You can see as we approach, we're getting to the hill where they've decided they're going to ride their sleds up and down this hill. And I say up and down because sometimes they pull them up the hill with the uh, four-wheeler. And once again, I'm having a little trouble controlling the camera as I'm flying the drone but you know I'm just feeling it out and at least I got them in the picture there a little bit 
And there's yours truly standing on the driveway there in front of the shop. Yes, that is the Rosa String Works shop right there. You can see the little cover over the man door there on the front of the building. And we turn him back around to watch him slide down the hill. That dog there is our new dog. His name is Tucker. And uh, he took the place of Buck, who passed away a couple of months ago. We had Buck from a puppy, and he was a good dog. But uh, Tucker uh, looks like he's going to fill the bill. This is the beginning of flight number three, I believe it is. And we're pointed down the valley the opposite direction. That is my son's place that you can see in the uh, picture there. My son bought the farm right in front of my farm. That road coming in there is the main county road that we live on. It goes three miles back out to the highway. So we're at the very end of a three mile long gravel road. I tried to fly up on top of that big hill, but somehow or another, the drone wouldn't let me go there. It said it was restricted airspace. Now, we're flying toward the highway, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it or what. So I turned around, and we're headed back down the main valley yet again. And we're a little higher this time. And... Uh, Gives you a little bit of perspective. We're in our own big valley here. It's it's really the the largest main valley right in the immediate area. This clearing on the right that you can see is we refer to it as the Indian field. We have found uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Native American artifacts there, mostly broken points. A uh, couple of tomahawk heads, and we actually found a grave there, which I did register with the state of Missouri. And promptly thereafter, because it was registered, someone snuck in on my ground and dug up the grave. Can you believe that? You talk about one mad Italian man. I couldn't talk for three or four days. I was so mad. I'm glad I didn't catch the person because I'm sure I'd be in jail. Just from a little higher perspective is all we're seeing here. Not exactly the most exciting footage at this point since we've seen this before. There you can kind of see my house on the right down in the trees there. the lower right corner of your screen the house is a really large house it's 144 feet long it's 80 feet deep at the deepest place takes a lot of firewood to keep that thing warm it's all concrete floors again that's my son's farm and that's me rocking the camera because I obviously was confused 
That's my son's barn on the right there, out in his field. The top of that hill there belongs to the government, I believe. I believe that's National Forest land. We're surrounded almost all the way around by National Forest land, so that's good and bad, as most people would know that have had that experience. And that valley there is where the Little Piney River runs down through. That river backs up when the Gasconade River floods, and the Gasconade would be about a mile to the left there. So it's not very far to the Gasconade River at all. My son's running cattle on his farm. I think you can even maybe see some cattle there in the picture. Little specks. His farm was completely grown up with thorn trees and he hired a bulldozer to come in and clean it all the way off that's what the big brush piles are there in the middle of the field and he's spent a lot of time burning those brush piles and cleaning them out but there are still some that exist and there's a look back down at my valley again for the deer hunters in the crowd it's pretty good hunting really is and there's my house on the left again there in the valley I'm really just operating the drone to get to know the controls and things like that Again, all of that ground on that side, uh, well, up to our fence, which you can't really see our fence there, but up into the woods there, a couple of hundred yards straight back is our fence line. And that uh, is all National Forest on the other side of that. And now we're aimed at my house again. That would be going right up the driveway. And someone's walking up the driveway there. And I believe I'm bringing it in for another landing. Well, thank you for bearing with me there as I was learning to operate the drone. I hope you enjoyed that look at the farm. Thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up. <laughs>